the Deep Artificial Composer, a creative neural network model for the automated melody generation. This talk is about automated music composition, and as an introduction, let us take a simplified viewpoint on how humans turn into composers. An untrained human, human might read, play, and analyze music scores. They take composition classes and might even learn music theory, eventually developing a knowledge that allows them to compose new pieces of music. Now, can new and curious melodies be created without human intervention? Ultimately, to answer this first question, we had to address another. How to evaluate the novelty of a set of melody? Interestingly, the answers that we found to the second question allowed us to address another part of the first question. The idea of formalizing music for algorithmic composition goes back as far as the 19th century with Ada Lovelace. In her notes, she suggested that if we can formalize music so that the analytic analytical engine can operate on it, it might compose elaborate and scientific pieces of music. Many compu computational fields have been explored to follow Ada Lovelace's thoughts, and here we're going to present a model belonging to the artificial neural network domain, the Deep Artificial Composer. It is a learning algorithm that aims at modeling the complex tasks that music composition is. <clears throat> to train uh, the Deep Artificial Composer, we constituted a heterogeneous music corpus composed of Irish and klezmer melodies, which we split in a big training corpus and a smaller validation set. We then built a multi-layer recurrent neural network composed of long short-term memory units. We selected these for their recent success in many sequence learning tasks as speech synthesis or translation, yeah, like your everyday Google Translate app. Let us for now keep the training corpus and our model of non transition and see how we train the latter. Starting with presenting the first randomly selected melody from the training corpus to our model. The first thing our model do when seeing a melody is trying to guess the probability of the first node duration. Then the model is informed of this node du duration and outputs the probability of the first node pitch. Then we move on to the next node and do the same. However, as the parameters of the model are still uh, randomly initialized and still random, and we haven't modified them, the output distributions are flat or uniform. Then the, the, net, the model doesn't know what to do. Well, cannot take any decision. It is only when we reach the end of the song, each song, that we try to understand why the predictions were wrong. And thanks to the backpropagation algorithm, we can update the model parameters in order to slightly improve the performances. Then we apply the same procedure to any to another randomly selected melody from the training corpus, and so on and so on. And after some time, the model picks a melody again. And again, for the first node predictions, the artificial composers, composer does not know what should be the next node, illustrated here by the almost uniform distribution. The reason is simple, because the model is lacking any context of the current melody, every first notes are possible. However, if we go further in the melody, for this particular prediction, the long short term memory units in the artificial composer allows it to represent past notes in the melody, enabling our model to give more accurate predictions based on the entire melody history, or the context, and the temporal dependencies that our model has learned. Eventually, our model of node transitions has extracted enough, enough of the relationship between nodes in order to maximize the accuracy of its prediction. And for this model, we will stop training when the predict predictive performances are optimized. <coughs> At any stage of training, we can turn our model into a, an autonomous composer, and here's how we do it. <coughs> After Kenley asks the model to start working, we observe the duration probabilities and sample one duration. Now that we have selected the first duration, 
We inform the model of this choice thanks to the feedback connections and we can now uh, observe and sample the pitch distribution. Thus, selecting the first note in a growing melody. Then we move on to the second note selection. And here you see that the C sharp got sampled. And this is helpful for me because I can use it to tell you that why I only show a few examples, all pitches and duration are possible as output of our model, including complex rhythms such as triplets or gra and grace notes. And again, we add another note to our melody being autonomously generated by the deep artificial composer. And so on and so on, until the uh, end of the melody is sampled. Now that you are more familiar with the most important features of our model, let us move. Uh, let us let me present you some results. To begin with, uh, let us look at the evolution of the model predictions during training. In these figures, the actual notes of a melody. Of, from the validation corpus are depicted in white cycles. In order to be accurate, the model should have understood some rules about how notes are related with each other, as it has never seen this particular song during its training. The grayscale indicates the probability of the predictions. We observe that at early stages of training, the deep artificial composer is, as expected, not good at, take, at taking any decisions. Uh, here you see almost uniform distributions. And when the model is generating a melody at this stage, we obtain this kind of music. <laughs> well, it certainly it is interesting, but not Klezmer or Irish. Uh, while at later stages of training, the deep artificial composer has understand some patterns and is able to make more confident decisions, as shown here, which most of the times are the same that a human composer has taken. Now, one melody generated from the trained model looks like this. However, I will voluntarily not display the melody now, because for this paper, we were also interested in how to automatically evaluate the quality of generated melodies. Indeed, uh, unfortunately, the traditional statistical likelihood is a very unreliable evaluation method for generative models. Therefore, we had to find another way and thought that we could focus on novelty as a feature of creativity, a uh, property that a good generative model of music should somehow possess. Therefore, to address the first question, we decided to use a novelty profile measure to evaluate our, uh, our generative model. And here's how it works. Given the last m-1 nodes in a melody, is the model decision new with respect to a reference corpus? And in other words, it is as the deep artificial composer would ask itself, am I reproducing this transition? which we suggest to relate with, uh, am I using what I understand about the note relations in order to make this decision? Now, how do we build a novelty profile for a melody? We start with the first possible transition, here illustrated for a motif of four notes. And now imagine that the decision of an eight note E, as depicted here after these particular three notes, is never found in the training corpus. The novelty for this decision and motif size would be therefore 1 and a similarity of 0. Answering this question for each note transitions and different motif sizes, we could obtain such a novelty profile, where the novelty is increasing for bigger motif sizes. <coughs> the good thing about this measure is that we can take the leftover validation corpus and compute how similar are human composed melodies within each other's. And that's what we did in order to build this ground tool, uh, which is a baseline that an ideal model of music composition should match. What you see here is the median 5th and 95th percentiles of the average novelty for increasing motif sizes from left to right. Next, we generated 400 melodies and computed the novelty profile of these with respect to the same training corpus, but also with respect to the validation corpus. 
In this framework, melodies generated by our model exhibit a very similar distribution that sh than human created melodies. By computing the profiles with the validation corpus as a reference, the third point, we further check that the model has learned relations within nodes rather than reproducing scene node transition. Let me explain myself. Indeed, we expect that the model of node transitions that reproduces observed decisions will first exhibit a very low novelty with respect to melodies in the training corpus, as it's just redoing the same, and also a much higher novelty with respect to melodies in the validation corpus. <clears throat> now to check if these results are not an artifact of merging rhythm and melody predictions in a single melody, we apply the same measure on the duration and pitch sequences separately. We again observe that the results from our model uh, nicely match the ground truth. However, there could be still some space to increase the rhythm similarity or lower the novelty for longer motif sizes, as seen here on the right side. <clears throat> Finally, we found that the novelty profile measure can be used for style classification. And to understand how, uh, let me explain this figure. Each point represents a melody from the validation corpus. The vertical coordinate is the four node similarity with Irish only melodies in the training corpus. And their horizontal coordinate is also the four node similarity, but this time with klezmer only melodies from the training corpus. We then trained a classifier of music style on these data and obtained a high accuracy. The only five misclassified melodies are highlighted by the dashed box boxes. The red circles are then melodies classified as Irish and blue triangles melodies classified as klezmer. <laughs> we then apply this train classifier to melodies generated by our model. Not only generated melodies are correctly classified, but more importantly is the consequence of being able to do that. The DAG produces melodies that are consistent in style, as opposed to producing melodies that would be a mix of both styles. <clears throat> Next, I present two melodies that the uh, Deep Artificial Composer imagined, the ones that are highlighted by the two black arrows, starting with the ones classified as Irish. And as a quick and dirty analysis of uh, this Irish classified melody, we show that it exhibits, we see that it exhibits Korean rhythmical patterns across the tune. It seems to be in a 3 4 metric, uh, while this was not implicitly set uh, to the network. The mode of the melody fits the one of the E Dorian, uh, traditional Gaelic music mode, and the melody ends on the fundamental. On the left, the style specific similarity profiles uh, shows that this model exhibits a larger similarity to Iris and Klezmer. In red, we highlighted decisions of the artificial composer that were similar to the ones seen in the training corpus for a history of seven notes. Similarly, the melody labeled as klezmer shows a career on rhythmical patterns across the melody. The melody is in the scale of the G-Phrygian dominant, uh, again a traditional klezmer mode, and ends also on the fundamental. It exhibits a higher similarity with klezmer melodies than Irish melodies. <laughs> Now, before wrapping up, let us compare how one human composed Irish tune on the left, very well structured, and one generated Irish melody on the right as are similar 
on increasing time scales. However, they are structured on increasing time scales, starting with short time scales. <clears throat> in human composed Irish tunes, we typically observe that small interval intervals are preferred, which is also true on uh, melodies generated by our mother. Additionally, we observe complementary durations in both generated and real tunes. On medium time scales, musical phrases and bridges between them are typical of human composed Irish tunes. These are also found in their set of generated melodies. On long time scales now, uh, as I already said, it is observed that the mode is conserved in examples from the training corpus and from the generated corpus. We also see some rhythms that are repeated, which we also observe in melodies generated by our model, however in a less structured manner. Finally, finally melodic patterns and song theme are also repeated in both worlds, again in a less structured manner in the automatically generated world and for motifs of smaller size. Now, to conclude, in this paper we presented and evaluated the Deep Artificial Composer, a model for the algorithmic composition of melodies. The Deep Artificial Composer automatically extracts temporal dependencies between notes specific to a given corpus of melodies. It is consistent in mode, rhythm and style. We introduced the novelty profile in order to evaluate generated melodies and we use it to show that uh, the Deep Artificial Composer produces melodies that are as novel as human-generated songs. The style-specific novelty profiles enable our model to determine the style of the melody that it produces. <coughs> we use it uh, to show that the Artificial Composer learns similarities and differences between the music styles. Generated melodies uh, exhibit structures on multiple timescales, a property that is inherent in music. And finally, the diversity of generated melodies is close to infinite. <laughs> While on the limitation side, uh, the well-defined repetition structures as a typical 2 times 4 bar structure of Irish traditional melodies are not present in the melodies that our model produces. Also, only single voice melodies can be produced by our model, and it lacks the polyphony part and the harmonization, which we are currently working on. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>